Why is Brave not given as much flack as Google? I understand that they are vastly different companies with very different approaches to the advertising industry. I'm just curious why Brave doesn't get as much flack for as much of the mishaps they have had as Google would. Shouldn't companies like Brave that center themselves around valuing privacy be even more critically analyzed than the company that explicitly tracks people as their business model? I'm pretty sure anyone in the privacy community would agree with that sentiment. It's why I'm critical of companies like Signal and Apple who promote themselves as being privacy focused when their actions say otherwise. Can you guess what TechLore had to say about this? To dodge your question a tad, I just want to communicate that there may be some bias here since from my perspective, Brave gets a ton of flack for literally anything that isn't a standard browser feature. I see nothing but complaints surrounding BAT, Brave rewards, ads, affiliate links, etc. Typical Henry. Immediately ignores half the question in order to defend his precious browser. He's so quick to defend a questionable service, but can't seem to answer a simple question. Shouldn't privacy-focused alternatives be under more scrutiny because they advertise themselves as such? It's a yes extends. or no question. It's a very simple and straightforward answer. Yes, these services should be held to a higher standard. These services only exist because they know people are sick of the spying, tracking, data collection, and poor security practices. Advertising yourself as being privacy-focused while doing the opposite is nothing short of false advertisement and fraud. The truth is, uh, we could make a ton of money uh, if we monetized our customer. If our customer was our product, uh, we could make a ton of money. We've elected not to do that. We, we're not going to traffic in your personal, your personal life. I, I think it's an invasion of privacy. Uh, I think it's, uh, privacy to us is a human right. It's a civil liberty. And, and something that is unique to America. Take Signal, for example. They promised for years to roll out usernames to replace the phone number requirement, only to turn around and say, sorry, we're keeping it. They do require a phone number. Now, this can be a voice over IP number, but that's not always feasible for everyone. Signal is not dropping the phone number requirement. That is how they prevent spam. <laughs> Also, just a quick note, I said Signal is completely open source. Since this incident happened, they have added a small bit of proprietary code that they use for fighting spam and abuse. Again, this is a very tiny bit of code. I don't think it's really something to worry about. The only reason it's not open source is so that spammers don't figure out how to get around it any faster than they already will. Contrary to what Henry says, which flip-flops week to week, a phone number is a highly personal piece of information for the average person. Sure, you can use a Mint Mobile SIM card to bypass the requirement, but it's a contradiction to do so in itself. Now, what's mind-blowing for me was actually stepping back to see where this relationship was happening in other areas of my workflow, not just basic stuff, um, even places I wasn't really expecting. So, for example, as much as I enjoy Signal, I had the realization recently that uh, Signal can actually oftentimes be a crutch for some of the workflows I want to explore. I like to use multiple phones, and Signal not allowing me to use multiple phones prevents me from exploring several of those workflows that could otherwise improve my privacy and security in other ways, not even related to my messenger. I did find alternatives like using services like Molly, which is a signal fork on Android that actually do allow you to link a different phone to another phone that already has a signal account on it. But this is ultimately still a workaround. So as much as I love signal and it's still my main messenger, just my choice of using Signal instead of maybe something else does influence the devices that I choose to use and buy. And this is just a relationship that you can see in a lot of places when you stop to look. If you don't want to give out your phone number, then why are you bending over backwards to use a service that requires it? Why would you lock yourself into a service that restricts the type and quantity of devices, especially when better alternatives don't impose such a restriction? Session Messenger is a literal fork of Signal that requires no information, not even a phone number or email address. But of course, leave it to creators like TechLore to dismiss it simply because it hasn't been involved in any court cases yet. It applies to everything. People are like, Signal's compromised because they require a phone number. And it's like, let's just ignore literally every freaking legal request that's been sent to Signal that only came back with the information Signal promised to give them. My takeaway today is use services that are proven. Signal is proven to collect almost nothing. 
There have been actual court documents that have been released to the public that show they were get almost able to give nothing. Not even your phone number, nothing. We're also big fans of like a history of legal requests. Like for example, we've talked about all the time that Signal has been served multiple legal requests and every time they do, they have almost nothing to turn over. So these are the kind of things that help build trust. Yes, testing it in court cases is important. I'm not denying that. However, not every single messenger has been tested in court, so it's really not a fair metric to dismiss other messengers. If anything signals court cases are used as a cop-out to deflect any negative comments, even the criticisms that are legitimate concerns. Hell, it took years for TechLore just to admit that Signal's new user notification system was a privacy issue. See, if you join Signal for the first time, Signal notifies all people in your life who use Signal, who have you as a contact, that you join Signal. This is a fun way to say hi when someone joins for the first time. It's less fun for people in domestic abuse situations who need to use Signal secretly, and if they're not aware of this notification system and their abuser uses Signal, the abuser will be notified that the victim has joined Signal. Signal offers zero way to stop this from happening. You can disable these notifications from being received on your end so you're not notified when others join, but you can't prevent yourself from notifying your contacts when you join Signal. Signal needs to either make this clearer to users so they can use alias numbers, they can have an option when users create an account not to notify their contacts, or they can just outright remove this feature, fix it Signal, it puts people at risk. Getting back to the Brave browser, they themselves are no stranger to controversy. We've got everything from injecting referral links into the address bar to installing a VPN without user consent and even accusations of the browser running in the background even when the user has closed the browser. Brave's business model alone is controversial. Blocking ads is one thing, but blocking ads from everyone else while injecting your own is pretty shady in itself. Why shouldn't people be critical of Brave? People already distrust Apple, Google, and Microsoft for installing features without user permission. People move to these alternative products and services because they want to know what's being installed on their devices. Why should Brave be given an exception?